Hey, hey, boys and girls. Hey, thank you for tuning in to the third video on gears. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about uh, different gearing combinations and how they can benefit you and find the speed on the racetrack. All right, so um, now that we've kind of talked about gear ratios and, and, and what the change in the sprocket or driver gear does and the uh, axle gear does, Let's talk about gearing combinations, right? Okay. So when you're doing gear combinations, sometimes it's not just about the ratio, right, that you're trying to figure out. <coughs> you want the right gearing combination for your setup, all right? And no two gearing combinations are the same, all right? Now, when you talk to engineers or a lot of people, they're going to tell you that ratio is ratio. It doesn't matter what they're going to say is it doesn't matter if you're on an 1863 if the gear ratio is 3.50 or if you're on a gear or a gear combination of a 1542 as long as the ratio is 3.50 to 3.50 it's the same. In reality that's that is true but in reality it's not true. Okay? Because not only is the gear ratio the same, yes, so that means that the max RPMs that the engine is going to produce is going to be the same, right? Because the, the amount of times the axle spin to as many times as the, or as many times as the, the crank spins to how many times the axle spin is the same. However, so your, your max RPM is going to be the same. However, the different gear combinations will produce different track results, meaning that, yes, they will turn the same RPM. However, the way they build that RPM inside of a lap is going to be different. Well, David, what do you mean? Well, okay. So let's say here we have an 1863 gear combination that produces a, ra a ratio of 3.50, okay? Now, we also have the same gearing combination, which is a seven, or a different gearing combination, I should say, of a 1759 that produces a ratio of 3.47. So these ratios are fairly the same, right? They are a little bit different, but they are in the, they are in the same realm that they're close enough where they, they're going to act the same. But the difference is, is that now, because you're at a gear, different gearing combination, the, the characteristics and the physics with the chain change. The larger gear combination, right, the 1863, doesn't put the chain in as much of a bind as the smaller gear combination does. So because of that, it's going to carry more momentum. And because it carries more momentum, you're going to have a whole lot more top-end speed. However, the smaller gear combination, even though it isn't going to it isn't going to carry as much momentum as the larger gear combination, is smaller. So therefore, it's easier for the engine to turn it over and to pull it. And because of that, you're going to get more acceleration off the smaller gear combination. So those different characteristics go into making a decision on a good gear. It's not just all about RPM. You know, if you're at a race and you're not getting the forward drive off the turn like you want, then you might want to go with a 1759 combination. Or you're getting plenty of forward bite off the turn and a lot of drive off the turn, but they're kind of hurting you at the other end of the straightaway. Well, then you might want to go to an 1863. Also, pro tip. When you're, when you're looking at gear uh, ratios, every one tooth on the driver gear, on the clutch gear, is worth four teeth on the axle gear. So that means that every time you change a tooth on the clutch, it's about you got to change four teeth on the, on the axle to get around the same ratio. So, for instance, this 1863, if I drop one tooth 
to the driver to a 17, and I have to drop four teeth on the axle to produce around about the same ratio. Well, guys, I appreciate you joining me for this video. I tried to keep it as brief as I could. Um, I appreciate you uh, coming in and watching. And uh, remember, you know, race is tough. Don't be leaving this being the trailer.